Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Colonization. This is post-commentary on the missions that are conducted during the live stream on March 20th. Just a reminder, this is all in the Realism Overhaul set of mods for Kerbal Space Program, so we're operating on Earth in the real solar system. My main goal this time was to handle some resupply missions so we could proceed with our interplanetary missions, uh, which were coming up. So we have to make sure that the Kerbals all have food, water, and oxygen so that they will survive while I'm conducting those interplanetary missions that are already underway. So uh, here I am using Aeronym's Halcyon 1.4 and I'm expanding its food, water, and oxygen tank in order to carry supplies to the station. I decided that we would send two more Kerbals to the station because Pijeeper, who is currently on the station, is all alone and he was in chat and requested some company. So I decided that we would send two Kerbals and all the supplies. And I am launching it on a Falcon 9 as you can see. Previously, uh, this capsule was launched on a Kingfisher, but the Falcon 9 seemed sufficient and all on the whole looked a lot better. So that was the plan, and here you can see me arranging the stages, and it looks like the Falcon 9 can carry this payload even though it's 19 tons, though uh, the first stage will not be able to have any fuel reserved for return or anything like that. I try out my KOS script here for the Falcon 9. Uh, and since the KOS script was baselined on the Falcon 9, it's a pretty solid thing to do. But one thing I forgot that uh, will come up later is that the way I wrote the script, at a certain point, it relies on the mission starting at T plus zero. And obviously this did not start at T plus zero because I time warped to match the station's inclination and longitude to ascending node. So. Yeah, I'll have to actually cancel the KOS script soon. I, I already realized that by this point. I'm just waiting for the right time to do it. Maximizing the use of the script for this launch. But as you can see, everything is going well. Our two new Kerbonauts, uh, recruited from Twitch chat, of course. Our uh, Maker Michael and Gertuskran. Don't know if I'm saying that right but everything proceeding nominally and then I cancel the program because past this point it starts making corrections that are based on mission time. So we do want to start at T plus zero in that case. Alright, so here we go, second stage looking good. That's a good view of Florida right there. Not too much suspense about this launch now that I'm in control. I've flown the Falcon 9 many, many, many times before and so quite experienced with handling it and as I said the KOS script was written specifically for this and then modified uh, for the other launchers. Okay we are about to pass apoapsis. Very nice. So actually uh, I'm recording this voiceover on Friday and there will be a SpaceX launch to the station today, CRS-8 and not exactly like this obviously Dragon capsule and no people on board, but uh, in principle, this is a much larger capsule with a lot more delta v. You can see 1,700 meters per second, even with the heavier supply load. I believe Aeronim made this for lunar missions, and so it had enough juice for that. Uh, presumably, getting into orbit around the moon and then potentially returning to the Earth. Okay, looking good. Setting the fuel down for the rendezvous burn. Getting the closest approach distance down. I took advantage of the fact that we had a lot of fuel and boosted myself to a really high apoapsis in order to quicken the whole rendezvous process. And so I'm gonna have to do a few more burns in order to really match speeds. And of course, I'm a little bit too late at starting out this burn as we approach Sky Nest in order to kill all of the relative velocity. So it's scooting on right by. Lots of lag, of course, because this is not KSP 1.1, and uh, it's having to render all the stuff on the single core. We are approaching Sky Nest here. A judicious use of time warp near the station. Have to be careful about that. Tends to be marginally glitchy. You can see the station's at uh, 432 by 423 or so. Not a bad altitude. Okay, lining up. 
Sky Nest is not very big, but it does have inflatable modules, and the International Space Station is due to get its very first inflatable module with CRS-8 today, so that'll be interesting. Uh, just a little mini Bigelow inflatable. Bigelow Aerospace is uh, pioneering the whole inflatable module thing. And in fact, I think one of the modules currently attached to the station is based on one of the Bigelow designs for realism overhaul. They use the Bigelow specifications. Okay, and... Wow, that's close. Um, <laughs> come on! Oh, there we go. Alright. Still, uh, Moon Chaser is really big compared to the rest of the station. This is actually the first time I'm using Ship Manifest to transfer not just crew, but also supplies. And so I got some help from chat, and there were some weird glitch issues. It had a really loud sound, and I actually had to replace the sound so that uh, it wouldn't be so annoying. But anyway, I transferred the resources in, and we were all set as far as Skynest is concerned through the time period of the missions. So I needed to resupply two other things. The, the station around the moon, which is Endymion Station, and also the Mars Cycler. The Mars Cycler is fine except for oxygen. So it's got uh, food because of its algae and greenhouse, and it's got water because of the water purifier, but the oxygen was a little bit short. So what I decided to do here was to have little oxygen tanks placed radially, and then the Kerbal would EVA and take those oxygen tanks off. The Kerbal would then place the oxygen tanks on the Mars Cycler so that the Mars Cycler then would have the oxygen capacity it needs for transfers to and from Mars. Um, right now it doesn't seem like it has enough capacity so we really need more tanks of oxygen on there. Anyway, uh, so yep, there we go. I'm launching this on the Falcon Heavy because I wanted this resupply vessel to handle the Mars Cycler as well as the lunar station. But you can see there's something wrong with this launch on the launch pad, and I'll zoom in later to show you what it is. But that and other factors led me to cancel using this for the Mars Cycler for the time being, and instead just go straight for the lunar station. You can see there that the core engines are throttled down here, so that, of course, the boosters run out before the core, but not by much. Actually, you can see the fuel gap is not too huge. I don't know why I didn't use a KOS script for launching this. We did have a launch at T plus zero, so... I do have a KOS script that can handle it, but I guess I just thought this was a little bit more straightforward. Also, I have been having a lot of uh, stability trouble. The program kept quitting on me, so maybe I just didn't think of trying anything too experimental on this one. I just wanted to get it done. Okay, we should be coming close to booster step here. Stage time down there is reading the core stage rather than the boosters. Here we go, boosters out and separation. No fuel was spared for retrieval in this case. This is a lunar mission. Okay, there's core stage out and separation, and now the second stage. Somebody had asked about the ability of the Falcon 9 second stage to push the heavier payload we would expect on a Falcon Heavy. Uh, of course, the Falcon Heavy carrying about three times more than the Falcon 9 normally does. Uh, but that's not a problem because the Falcon 9 second stage is actually way overpowered for what the Falcon 9 generally does. It maxes out at 5 Gs. Uh, here, of course, it's got much more modest g-force and acceleration, but still uh, quite enough to handle the heavier payloads of the Falcon Heavy. Here we're getting past 1g. A little bit of pitch up, but nothing like you'd see from a Centaur stage, for instance. Okay, so it is out. It's got a little bit of reserve Delta V, but uh, we're just going to let that go this time. Now you can see the problem I have. Uh, well, one of the problems is that for some reason SSTU has a little glitch occasionally with the with the engine mount, and in this case it's the engine mount on the service propulsion system, an AJ-10 that I was using for the lunar stage, the one to get us into lunar orbit and the rendezvous around the moon for the station. 
Uh, here we have an RL10B2 that's doing the work here for transfer to the moon. The reason why I decided that we couldn't do the Mars Cycler first is because this stage has trouble maneuvering. It doesn't have many RCS thrusters and so we, it would make rendezvous with the Mars Cycler in orbit around Earth very difficult. So I decided to head straight for the moon instead and it so happens that this had just enough delta V for the lunar transfer. Actually maybe a little bit short. Weird engine mount problem there. You can see it's got a gap between itself and the rest of the vehicle. It's supposed to be one integrated vehicle. It wasn't supposed to look like this and this was very irritating to me. Anyway, uh, so actually that transfer stage didn't get us quite all the way there, but just a bit of an RCS correction was necessary in order to uh, really make that orbit happen. Well, that approach happen. We're not getting to orbit just yet, but very nice approach. There is the problem that the station is at quite an inclination around the moon, and we are not at the right time to try and fix that from away from the moon, so we just have to deal with it. Probably should have picked a better launch window, but uh, I didn't think of it at the time. And so now we'll have to use the fuel on the service propulsion system to do all the corrections. Hopefully we'll have enough. It will be a tight thing. So here is our approach into Lunar SOI. Everything looking fine. And now I have to plot quite a lot of different burns in order to try and figure this out. We've got a 41 degree relative inclination to the target, so the best thing to do is to correct that at the descending node, which is far away from the moon itself, so we don't have the gravity to work as much gravity to work against when changing the inclination. Of course, inclination changes should be done away from the gravitating body, while the prograde and retrograde burns generally are better done close to the gravitating body. So here we are capturing at periapsis, making sure to get into a loose orbit so that we can correct that inclination. And you can see very high orbit, 31,000 kilometers, barely within the sphere of influence of the moon. I think the lunar sphere of influence is about 68,000 kilometers or something like that, but we didn't want our orbital period to be too long. Here is the inclination correction. Okay, and that is done. Lost my target there. Still got six degrees of inclination. I correct that with subsequent burns. This is a very long and arduous process and it basically means that with all of these resupply missions, I wasn't able to get on with the interplanetary missions this time. Also, the game kept crashing, which was a bigger problem. It's recently been a little bit better. I don't know why it was particularly crashy on this day, whereas it's a little bit more stable normally. So anyway, every time the game crashes, it takes a while to load up, and yeah, that cuts the amount of things I can do. Okay, here we go, uh, down to... Oh, I passed the uh, closest approach distance. Well, 9.6 kilometers, I think it'll be easy to adjust that. Bit of RCS going there. Okay, too bad I can't stage off that ugly engine at this point and just use the RCS. Yeah, this did not look the way I wanted it to look. Okay, approaching Endymion Station now. Lag as usual. Hopefully 1.1 will solve such things. We will see. I turned the station a little bit because it's got that docking hub and it's a little bit hard to see the docking port otherwise if it's at an angle and all. So make sure that the docking port is properly facing the resupply vessel and now it can approach. We do have three Kerbals on board the station by the way. So we've got three on Sky Nest and three here around the moon. Nice and balanced. You can see we only have 20 meters per second left in the service propulsion system, so pretty much spot on in terms of how much delta V we needed for this particular rendezvous. Okay, closing in. It's probably getting a little bit tired. I didn't check all my camera views, so I was very confident in the approach. I mean, it looks all right right here, right? It looks pretty good. But then, and here, it looks really well lined up. Except, if you look at it from a different angle, 
like that one. Uh, something went wrong. Something went wrong somewhere around there. Yep. Okay, so we have to try again. Still quite askew. The thrusters should be balanced. I mean, the RCS thrusters should be balanced on this. I was having a little bit of trouble with the Halcyon because I had resized the supply tank and then didn't move the thrusters to compensate for that. This one, it's just, just swaying back and forth kind of thing. Come on. Then again, I might have balanced the thrusters based on a full fuel tank for the service propulsion system. Okay, connection. Alright. So, once again, using ship manifest to transfer all the stuff, and now we still need to get some oxygen over to over to the Mars Cycler, but after that, uh, it was all about interplanetary probes, so next time I'll be taking care of the Jupiter probes, and I think there's a Saturn probe involved, and that'll be the focus of the next episode. But anyway, for now, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.